satellite imagery and data company Planet announced this morning it has completed the acquisition of climate tech company Salo Sciences, moving a step closer toward understanding forest conversation and com conservation and helping combat biodiversity loss. Joining us now is Planet CFO and COO Ashley Johnson. Pardon my transposing there for a moment. It's an important Ashley. conversation as well. <laughs> yeah, so, let, so let's talk about that because we were just talking during the break. You came to us from the Bay Area where obviously there is a lot going on from a climate and weather perspective sure. right now. So what does Salo do and, and how is its data being used? Yeah, absolutely. Salo is a company we've been partnered with for a while. So this it was exciting to have them actually join our team. Um, Salo uses algorithms to measure forestry um, carbon. So you can think about the importance of that for companies that are looking to offset their carbon emission. They're essentially buying these carbon credits. They want to know that these are real. They want to have transparent, accurate measurements of that. We also work with them on things like understanding um, the amount of trees across California for, for fire observatory and, and fire risk management. So really important company, and we're really excited to have them on the team. Something that's really amazing about Planet Labs is kind of the makeup of where your revenue is coming in from, whether that be government contracts, whether that be companies that are just looking for better insights that you can provide them as well from some of the satellite imagery, and then additionally how you're continuing to launch in order to get some of that imagery intact. And so purely, I guess, focusing on the government side, where does that really kind of make up the, the large growth of your business versus some of those other categories as well? You know, what Planet has done that I think is, is, is great is in the earth observation industry, historically you saw companies that were really gearing solutions towards government only mm -hmm. and really thinking about large, very expensive satellites that only a government in the end could afford to buy the data from. We've really shifted that model and we provide to the governments the same service we actually provide to commercial entities, which is the daily monitoring of change going on on the planet. It's a data subscription model. And with acquisitions like Salo Sciences, we're building um, solutions on top of that to make this data more accessible to companies that may historically not have worked with Earth observation imagery. And Ashley, as the CFO of a growth company, how are you balancing that growth, that go forward outlook with the reality, we might be in a recession at some point. Have you had to make tough choices in the business? We always are making tough choices with a company like ours where we have a very complex R&D organization. We have a team that's building satellites and thinking about the next generation that is going to be launched in three, four, five years, as well as the software solutions that we're building on top of the data. So we're always looking at what is the ROI of those investments and making these investments very carefully. So we um, went public last year and raised a lot of capital, which was exciting but we're very careful to make sure that that capital is going to sustain us until we are cash flow break even. Have you had to cut anything back, any projects you, you would have thought you were going to undertake this year? No, everything that we said we were going to do is really what we've been doing over the last year, and, and we're seeing the results of it. So we're, we're proud of the investments we're making and, and really proud of the execution of the teams. Have you seen any pullback on the part of clients as of yet in terms of what they're investing in? Sure, we have, uh, on the commercial side of the business in particular, we have companies that do have to think about their budgets and, and the investments that they make with us are important to the business, um, but they're also trying to make everything work. So um, that is a conversation that we have with some of our commercial customers. There's nothing that we're really seeing on an industry-wide basis. Um, and I think a lot of that speaks to the criticality of the solutions that we're providing. Operationally, is there a tapering of the number of launches that, that need to be done in order to continue to have kind of the baseline operational approach for the amount of imagery that you're able to have in the skies right now and provide some of those core customers? And what does that kind of tapering timeline look like? Yeah, so the way to think about it is right now we have about 200 satellites in orbit. Our smaller satellites that are, that are imaging the Earth every day have a useful life of about three to five years. That means we're replenishing about a third to a fifth of that fleet every year. And in fact, just last week, we launched another 36 satellites as part of that replenishment. Um, and then on our uh, high resolution satellites, we have 21 of those in orbit. We're currently working on the next generation. We call that our Pelican fleet. Um, and we have a new fleet that's in progress, which does hyperspectral imaging, which will be the first of its kind. Um, and that's another fleet that we have planned for the coming years. The first demo satellites intended to go up this year. Where do you think we are in the cycle of this industry? I mean, it feels like we're very early on. At the same time, you, there is a limited amount of space up there at the end of the day, and there's already concern about how many satellites are in orbit. So what do you think the eventual potential is, and where are we now on that, on that path? 
It's a really good question. I think we're actually really in the early innings. Um, there is a lot of space, so we do care about space junk and space congestion, and, and we spend a lot of time um, on that. In fact, we fly such low orbit satellites that when, they're, when the useful life of the satellite is over, they effectively burn up and we release that space um, back, I guess, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of the industry, it is really early innings. Last year was transformational to the industry. We've talked a lot about the tails, tailwinds that are driving the industry, digitizations of economies needing to have access to this data, sustainability trends needing to understand the environmental footprint, where you see climate change and what's causing it, and then peace and security and the impact of peace and security on the global economy. And we really saw that come to light last year. Uh, I think all of those tailwinds are starting to open up new markets for Earth observation. And so I expect this, the industry will continue to see new entrants. Um, Planet's obviously had a very exciting, exciting year, and we're excited about the market opportunity to come. A really important business operation. Thanks so much for joining us here on set. In yeah. studio, Planet CFO and COO Ashley Johnson. Appreciate Thanks for having me.